Beyond Meat is having a pretty bad year. They this story is the story that just kind of keeps on giving. It's the gift that keeps on giving, at least for us in the carnivore sphere. And I have no ill will against the regular people who go to work for Beyond Meat, making you know their living, making a product as legal and in theory safe, and all sorts of other things. I, I have nothing against the people who work there. You know, the typical man and woman who works there, you know, supports their family working there. Beyond Meat is having a terrible year, and if they are around at this time next year, I will be surprised because it's becoming more and more obvious no one wants their product. And the fake meat industry is beginning to admit that this is not just a Beyond Meat problem. This is a problem for the entire sector of that, that sector of the economy, the plant-based meat sector, which gets a lot of support from very powerful and influential people who want to replace our the meat we eat with the equivalent of human dog food. And no, I don't think you should feed your dogs this stuff either. Dogs are obligate carnivores and should be treated as such. The sort of desperation move by the fake meat industry has been this whole time to try to get fast food companies to adopt their product, to have it as an option, usually requiring an upsell. So, I remember when the Beyond Meat um, Carl's Jr. Burger, whatever it's called, the Superstar, I think, three years ago now, maybe, when that hit their restaurants to order, you had to pay an extra dollar for that sandwich. That by itself was a stupid business move because people don't want to pay extra for something that it's, they just don't want to pay extra for that. Why would you want to pay extra for that? And so it came and went. And in the intervening time, every fast food restaurant chain, it seems, has offered a Beyond Burger or one of its competitors. And all but one of them have gone away. Uh, Burger King, for whatever reason, is just attached to the Impossible Burger. Don't know why that is. Reportedly, they're not getting very many sales of it, but they, they keep offering. It makes me kind of wonder if um, Burger King has some like ideological reason they keep offering a sandwich that no one's buying. But in a desperation move, the one fast food place that sh this should have worked out for, Taco Bell, put it on the menu, put the Beyond Meat on the menu for their tacos and burritos and other things. It's pretty, you know, it's, people who eat Taco Bell joke that this stuff is like the lowest you know, quality meat that you can buy you know, anywhere, like lower than anything in the grocery store. People know when they go to Taco Bell, they're not eating things they should be eating. And it's so seemed like a you know, match made in heaven for Taco Bell and for Beyond Meat. This could be what saves them. So headline from Axios, Taco Bell CEO, we got mixed reviews for plant-based meat alternatives. So sad. It looks like Taco Bell is not going to be putting this thing on the menu either. In fact, this is being read as a sign that this isn't going to work, that the entire industry is in trouble. And that's fine with me. That's fine for all of us who want people to eat a whole foods diet, who want them to go keto or carnivore if they so choose, to have access to real food for real human beings. That's not what Taco Bell is anyway, but this is good news because the, the fast food industry, it was attempted to be the entry point because the average American eats fast food like three times a week. Think about that. Some people eat a lot more often than that. Can you imagine hitting the McDonald's drive through every morning on your way to work, that being your breakfast? And when you want to, when you want to switch it up, you hit the Burger King drive through I can't imagine that. That stuff always just sort of wrecked me. I can't even imagine living like that. Not that I'm judging you, but that was you. We all have our stories, where we came from. But this article is uh, really revealing because there is, is there anyone left for Taco Bell to go to? We're not Taco Bell, but a Beyond Meat. Is there any place left for Beyond Meat to go to try to save their product that no one wants? Taco Bell looked like it was the last place. Those eraser chicken nuggets from KFC, they failed. McDonald's famously got rid of the McPlant a long time ago. I mean, what is left? on the American food landscape for them to try to save themselves because the grocery stores aren't selling the stuff much. You go in there and this stuff yeah, sells a little bit, but not, not that much, partially because the price point's ridiculous, but also because it doesn't taste like meat, which is what it's advertised to do. So let's take a look at the story because this is, this is really interesting. From the article, quote, Taco Bell's temporary plant-based meat products have gotten mixed reviews and customers shouldn't count on a national rollout anytime soon CEO Mark King tells Axios why it matters. The plant-based meat industry has encountered a series of setbacks in 2022, undermined by inflation, 
underwhelming restaurant test results and troubles at industry innovator Beyond Meat. This has been the toughest year for the plant-based meat industry since its inception, really. CFRA research analyst Aaron Sindarum tells Axios, it's not just a Beyond Meat problem, it's an entire category problem. The big picture. Taco Bell, one of the largest fast food chains in the world with more than 7,000 U.S. locations, is known for its willingness to test out a wide variety of new products. Any moves it makes in the plant-based space could be particularly influential, and it's tried a variety of plant-based meat alternatives in various places. They included the Crispy Milk Taco, a proprietary blood of soy and pea protein tested in Birmingham, Alabama in August. The Beyond Carne Asada Steak, based on wheat gluten and fava bean production, developed in cooperation with Beyond Meat and tested in Dayton, Ohio in August. The Naked Chalupa with Crispy Plant-Based Shell, a proprietary blend of pea protein tested in Irvine, California in June 2021. They're saying, we're very committed to explore more plant-based items, King says, but I do think it would work better if it was in areas that are much more open and interested in them. In short, they seem to work best as regional products. Sundaram says they are more popular in urban and suburban markets than in rural areas. End quote. Duh. Look, Taco Bell offered this in Seattle, Portland, San Francisco. They'd probably sell quite a few of them if you can convince that market to walk in the door. This is the other problem. Plant-based meat alternatives are going to be attractive to people who have a very particular view of health. And it often comes along with like a hostility towards big business, one that I can appreciate, honestly. Like, that seems healthy to me to be, you know, at least suspicious of this. So if you're already like health conscious and not a fan of big centralized businesses, why in the world would you want to go to Taco Bell unless it was the absolute last thing you needed, like your last desperation move? Besides, you know, I'm from Portland, Oregon originally. I was, I was around vegans all the time. There were these hypothetical conversations they'd have with people where, you know, would they actually try this stuff if it went, if the fast food places brought this to the menu? And actually, most of the time they said no, because as long as the real thing is on the menu, there's no guarantee that they, that they aren't getting shared in the same oil, that, that those crispy tacos aren't being fried in the same oil that the regular tacos are with the regular meat. See the problem. And we know this is the case because it turned out that that's exactly what KFC did. They put their eraser chicken nuggets in the same frying oil as their regular chicken nuggets. Oops. You get what they call cross-contamination because they don't want even like the, re the residues of the animal products on their vegan products. And I totally get it. I mean, if you are vegan for ethics and values reasons, you wouldn't want to have any of that touch your food. Totally get it. But these, the food companies don't get it. Or maybe Taco Bell decided and the fast food companies decided it, well, they weren't going to get that business anyway. And so it wasn't worth the trouble to set up whole new dedicated fryers. I don't know. But what we see here is, you know, Beyond Meat stock has crashed by like 90% over the course of, the, of 2022. Every fast food experiment with this stuff has failed. In my mind, that may, that's a good thing. I mean, maybe, just maybe people want to eat real food. Now, if we can just get them to convince them that Taco Bell isn't real food and that McDonald's isn't real food. I don't know. What do you think of this story? Let me know in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. Sharing this on social media helps enormously as well. I'm Anthony Stein, The Practical Carnivore. Thanks for tuning in.